Hello everybody, welcome to our last exercise in module 13. So we've gone through a few different types of analysis of variance, these different types of experimental designs, either the completely randomized design, the observational study, we've looked at the randomized block design where we're accounting for this other source of variation that was due to what we call heterogeneity or differences between our experimental units. Now we're into these factorials where we're looking at differences across treatments in multiple factors, as well as interaction. So this is the last one. I'm going to go through this problem a little bit more quickly. Less talking, more doing. This is a third example of a factorial. So I've already talked, I think, a fair bit about some of the mechanics, some of the problems, some of the things that can come up. So for this one, let's just jump into this. We'll produce our complete uh, factorial ANOVA. We'll get to some solutions and that will be it. And hopefully doing it like this gives you some idea of just kind of the flow of how to go about tackling these types of problems. So let's get into it. As part of a study being done on regional wage differences, data has been collected on wages of two different trades. So we have carpentry and welding. So what I'm going to do right away is I'm going to say, okay, there's that one factor. Now, it doesn't matter which one I call factor A or factor B. So this is the first one that I'm coming across in the description. I'm going to say, okay, here's my factor A, right? This was my two different trades, carpentry and welding. Here I have A equals two treatments. And, oh, and we get to the next right next uh, factor right away we have across three regions so we have wages on two different trades carpentry and welding across three different regions west coast central and east coast so i'm going to call that my factor b and here i have b equals three treatments again it really makes no difference which one I call factor A or factor B. I could switch these, it doesn't change anything, okay? So, now let's see, da, da, da. you've been tasked with performing the appropriate analysis to determine whether there exists a difference in the hourly wage rates between these professions across these three regions. And of course, as this is a factorial, we'll also perform a test for interaction. In other words, is there a specific difference, uh, a difference in wage between specific combinations of that trade and region. Okay, so we have everything that we need. Let's, uh, oops, let's color code things here. It just might help us keep things in order. There's some reds, there's some blues, and let's see some purple, and our black. Okay, so we've got all of our means have all been calculated. They've all been given to us. Thankfully, we don't have to do all that ourselves, but certainly be prepared. It's quite possible that you would have to do that yourself. So in factor A, here we have two treatments, carpentry and welding. Here, I'm going to write it like this. In the other two examples, I wrote it where I had two treatments. I still said not all of them are equal. Here, just to be different, I'm going to write this as a pure inequality. Again, I can only do that because I only have two treatments. Okay. If I have more than two treatments, as I do in factor B, well then here, of course, I have to write the more expected, not all are equal, or at least one is different. So there's my west is equal to my central, I'm going to run out of room, is equal to my east coast. The reason I'm using two letters for my subscript is because here I've already used mu c for carpentry, so I don't want to use mu c again here for central. So I'm using two letters to denote 
region. And that's just because once I've used one notation and I've defined it, I don't want to use it again for something else. Not all are equal. And interaction, our null is that there is no interaction. And the alternative is interaction exists. Okay, that's good. Let's um, write out our ANOVA. So I'm going to come down here so I've got lots of room for the calculation. So I've got uh, trades. Let's do this in order. Uh, oh, that was in order. Factor A is trades. Factor B uh, was region. And then we have interaction, error, and total, sums of squares, degrees of freedom. You guys, really at this point, I would expect that you would be able to put together an ANOVA as easily as I have just done. Go through a few exercises, a few, uh, a, a few practice runs, and hopefully you'll get plenty of practice doing this and it will just come together easily. The challenge is often identifying what kind of ANOVA is it, but hopefully again you've gone through the material and you can see how to identify whether it's a randomized block or whether it's vectorial or what have you. So first things first, we're going to get all of our sums of squares. So SSA, this is BR, and we're looking at those differences. Okay, so SSA, here I've only got those two, these are our red means. I'm looking at these ones here. B times R, three, and R again is three, and again that's, I know all of my examples have had three, that's just keeping things simple, keeping things small. It doesn't, it's not a requirement that it be three. Three is actually very small. In reality, you would have much more than just three replications. So B times R, three, let's get a pen instead of a highlighter, three times three, 2544 minus that grand mean squared 2789 minus that grand mean squared. So that gives me 2544 minus 2667 squared plus 2789 minus 2667 squared times that by three times three is nine. That gives me my sum of squares of 27.01 degrees of freedom here, A minus one, A is two. So I have one degree of freedom. My mean squared is 27.01. Moving on to region. So that's SSB. This is A times R. And we're looking at those blue means now. So SSB, A times R is two times three. And now we have three of these differences to square. And here they are, the blue values. So that's 2683 minus the grand mean. 25.5 minus the grand mean and 2767 minus the grand mean. Let's see what that gives us. 2683 minus the grand mean plus 25.5 minus 2667 squared plus 27, 
67 minus 26, 67. Multiplied by 2 times 3 is 6. And that gives me, whoops, that gives me 14.37 degrees of freedom here. B times 1, B is 3, so this is going to be 2. That gives me 7.18. Interaction, everybody's favorite. Let's get a bigger eraser here. Okay, interaction. SSAB equals R. Now we're looking across our interaction means, X bar for treatment combination, IJ. Let me keep this color coded. X bar IJ minus the red, minus the blue, plus the black squared. Okay, let's get through this. Feel free to fast forward. R, no, R is three. We have three replications starting up top. So I'm going to start here. One, two, three. I'm going to go along that row. 25, 67, minus 25, 44. That's that mean that's just off screen. Minus the blue mean, 26, 83 plus the grand mean squared. See if I can fit one more on this row, 2467, I'm here now, minus that same red, minus the next blue, plus the grand mean, right, these a little bit smaller, I'm on to the next one here, 26, same red, 2544, the next blue, 2767, plus the ground mean. Now I'm on to the next row here, so I'm looking at 28 next. And we're on to the next red mean, 2789. Back to the first blue, oops, that's not a plus. 2683. And our grand mean, 2667 squared. Almost there. Next one here, 26. 33, 2789, 25.5, 2667, last one, I'm here now, 29 and a third, minus that red mean 2789, that blue mean 2767, and finally our grand mean squared all multiplied by 3. <sighs> okay, let's do this. 2567 minus 2544 minus 2683 plus 2667 squared. Next one, plus 2767 minus 2544 minus 25.5 plus 2667 squared plus 2665. 
plus, I'm on 28, minus 27.89, minus 26.83, plus 26.67, plus, I'm on to the last row, 26 and a third, minus 26.87, 29, 25.5 plus 26.67. Last one plus 29.33 minus 27.89 minus 27.67 plus 26.67 squared times all that by 3 and I have 2.12. Okay, 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 we got it. We got it. 2.12 degrees of freedom. The product of the two above gives us two. Divide that by two, 1.06. Okay, we're almost there, guys, almost there. So remember this, I either give you SST or I give you SSE. And if I come back up here somewhere, I can see I have SST is 68. So if that is 68, well now I can work backwards. 68 minus 2.12 minus 1437 minus 2701. That gives me an error of 24.5 degrees of freedom. A times B times R minus 1. A is 2. B is 3. That's 6. R minus 1 is 2. 6 and 2 is 12. That gives me MSE of 2.04 degrees of freedom total. I have once more 18 observations, 18 minus 1, 17, which is also 12, 14, 16, 17. Always the sum of everything above. And you can maybe see now when these degrees of freedom calculations are a little bit more complicated, having that double check to be able to verify that yes, nt minus 1, which is a really easy calculation, nt minus 1 is equal to the sum of everything above it. If you get something different, it means you screwed up on one of those degrees of freedom calculations. So it's a helpful double check. It doesn't tell you really where the mistake is, but at least you'll want to go back and find it. Our f, so again, the relevant mean squared value, mean squared trades, region, interaction, always divided by MSE. So for this first one, 27.01, here I'm looking at this one here, 27, whoops, 27.01 divided by 2.04, that gives me a F of 13.24. The next one, now I'm looking at 718 divided by 2.04. That gives me an F of 3.52. And then finally for interaction, I have 1.06, always divided by that MSE. 1.06 divided by 2.04 that gives me an F of 0.52. P-value, critical value. Remember now, we may not always have, in fact, we probably won't have the same F distribution, depending on how many treatments you have, how many replications you have. Each of these three F tests might actually be a different distribution. Again, I am using the smallest sample sizes, the smallest number of treatments as I can to keep these calculations 
as simple as possible. Of course, that doesn't look simple. That looks tedious. Well, if I had even more treatments, it would get even longer. So yes, in my examples, degrees of freedom and everything have been the same, but that doesn't have to be the case. That's just keeping it simple, believe it or not. So our first F test, we don't have a uh, level of significance given, so let's just do 0 0.05. And here I have one numerator, and all of them will have 12 denominator degrees of freedom because MSE is in the denominator of all of them. So I'm going to come down to my F tables, 1 and 12. There's 1 and 12. Here are my critical values. Here are those probabilities. My critical value at 0.05 is 0.475. My p-value, here I've got that test statistic 13.24. Well, that's off the charts. The largest I have is 9.33. So again, think of this. We've got this F distribution. I have 9.33 is the largest value I have available. And that's an area of 0.01. Of course, my test statistic here is somewhere way out here at 13 point something. 13 and a quarter. So certainly that area is something less than 0.01. So my p-value is less than 0.01. The next one. So now I'm into a, a separate distribution, right? Here I've got only two degrees of freedom in the numerator instead of one. So now I'm looking at, let's change colors this two numerator, still 12 denominator, so those are my relevant test statistics or critical values to help me figure out what my p-value is going to be. My critical value at alpha 05, so there, oops, here's alpha 05, so that gives me a critical of 3.885 or call it 3.89. The test on interaction, same level of significance, same degrees of freedom. So same critical value for that one. My test statistic on region, here is three, whoops, 352. Let's get rid of that, there we go. 352, so I'm going to come down here and I'm looking for 352 in this tiny little table. And well, there it's between 2.8 and 385. So the relevant probability is between 0.05 and 0.1. So less than 0.1, greater than 0.05. And that's consistent. We see with that critical value rejection rule, I have my critical value, there's 389. We can leave that one there, call that 389. And this whole area here is 0.05. And our test statistic was 352, so it's pretty close. 352. So certainly I can see that area. It must be something greater than 0.05, yeah? Okay, finally, interaction. Same distribution, tiny test statistic. So that test statistic is somewhere way over here. And it's going to be smaller than the smallest value, right? Again, I'm still looking at two degrees of freedom in the numerator. The smallest value I have is 2.8. And 2.8 is, you know, somewhere up here with an area in that upper tail equal to 0.1. Well, I'm way down here. 
my p-value is all of this. So something much greater than 0.1. And so we have it. Even when we're trying to do it quickly, we're still in at over 20 minutes. So we are able to only reject. On the first one, we are unable to reject the second one. We are definitely not able to reject on the third test. So we have sufficient evidence to reject the null hypotheses on factor A. Our evidence supports the alternative hypotheses, which means we do have evidence to show that there is a difference, a statistically significant difference in the average wage between carpentry and welding. We did not reject on factor B. We are unable to show a statistically significant difference in average wage across these three regions. We did not reject on the test on interaction, which means we do not have evidence to show that there exists a statistically significant difference in between treatment combinations. So carpentry on the west coast versus carpentry in central uh, region versus carpentry in east coast versus welding on west coast etc etc so we are unable to show a statistically significant difference in those various treatment combinations okay that's it we're done module 13 on ANOVA I hope that this has been helpful ANOVA is not going away you're going to see ANOVA still in module 14 and 15 they're going to have a kind of a different look but they're not going away so hopefully this has helped make some sense. Thanks for watching, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.